So are you an artist and you're wondering, you know, is my work good enough to sell? Am I ready to sell my art? How do I know if I'm ready to sell my art? Well, these are all the the things that we're going to talk about in today's topic. And I want to welcome you here to my studio. Um, Welcome to the Artist Life podcast with Dina Tollefson. And I'm really glad uh, to have you here in the studio today. And this is actually a really important topic. And I think that we as artists, we're all wondering, uh, you know, am I good enough? Uh, how will I know if I'm ready to sell my artwork? So there are really three things that we'll talk about today. We'll talk about, am I, am I good enough? How will I know I'm good enough to sell my artwork? And then how do I get started doing this process of selling my artwork to others? So let's start off with the topic, am I good enough to sell my artwork? Well, I'm sure that you have been to uh, some place where art is exhibited. Maybe you've been to an art museum. Maybe you've been to an art gallery. Maybe you've been out on the streets walking around and you see some artwork for sale. And you look at that artwork and you say, you know what, I could do that artwork. Maybe even very famous artworks. You, you look at it and you know, yep, I think I could do that. Well, it actually does not actually get down to skill or talent as an artist as to whether or not you can sell your artwork. It, uh, selling art really has very little to do with your level of skill. What it really has to do with is your reputation as an artist and your brand as an artist. So this whole idea of am I good enough or can I sell my artwork is really, uh, can you can put that to rest and then know that that absolutely yes, you can sell your artwork and there is a market for all types of artwork. No matter what it is that you do as an artist, there is an art market out there. Sometimes when we have a talent for something, we'll tend to discount it and think that it isn't as valuable of a thing as it really is. So as an example, um, I have not been given, by God, I have not been given a beautiful singing voice. I can make artwork, I can do engineering, I can cook, I can do some things like that, but I am not particularly good as a singer. And by golly, I value singers. I, I, uh, I kind of put them on a pedestal. <laughs> and it's because it's something that I can't do. Um, yes, I can sing uh, with the best of them at, uh, at church, a good Lutheran singer. I belt it out, but it is not necessarily beautiful to listen to. So uh, it's one of those things also with, uh, with whether you are a painter, a sculptor, you draw, whatever it is that you do as artwork, when we make something and we can do this ourselves, we'll tend to maybe discount it and think it's not as big of a deal or it's not as worthy as, as other things. So that can also be a factor uh, when we are uh, considering, you know, am I, am I good enough? It really gets down to a confidence kind of thing. And uh, when we are um, thinking about ourselves as artists, and when we make a piece of artwork, it is very, um, it's very, what's the word? It's very revealing uh, to do this. Uh, We really put what's in our, our minds, we put what's in our heart out onto the canvas, out onto the paper. We put that into the clay if we're sculptors. And it is, um, it's almost a painful thing to put that out there. And when somebody looks at our artwork, it is tempting to, to say like, oh, you know, oh, it's not that good. Or if somebody comes and admires something that we're doing, it's easy to say, you know, oh yeah, hey, that's easy to do. Anybody can do that. And so, uh, so it's important to remember as an artist, if somebody comes up and they're interested in buying your work, you'll want to just say thank you. If they say, hey, you know, I love this, I, I, I resonate with this, I, I would like to buy this, say thank you. Um, what we want to avoid doing would be th- saying things like, oh, you don't want that, or oh, that's my old work, you know, let me show you something new. Uh, if somebody came and saw something that you've done and they feel like they want to have it in their environment, it is a special relationship then that you and um, and this client or you and the collector or you if it's a friend, if it's a family member, a relative, if they want to display your work in their environment, 
it's it's a very special thing. So I don't know if you remember, but there is a show uh, when I was a little girl. There was a show um, uh, that had it was um, I think the year without the Santa Claus or year without Santa Claus, and in it was the story of the Island of Misfit Toys, and it always kind of made me cry. It makes me cry now thinking of it. But what the thing was was saying that a toy is not really loved. Until, um, until a child loves it. So uh, it could be made in the workshop or it can be sitting in a toy store. Um, but when a child loves it, it completes it. And I really feel like artwork is that way too, is that you know you as the artist, you put yourself out there, but when you complete the work by it going into someone's environment, whether it's an office, a school, on their living room wall, um, wherever it is, it is then now traveling to its final home and it is going to be making them, making changing their environment in a positive way. So also thinking about in, in terms of an analogy with music, think about uh, when you put some music on, uh, you're going to sometimes put music on and it can elevate your mood or change or modulate your mood of how you're feeling at that time. When we, uh, when we go in and, and we put a piece of music on, it is changing who we are, changing our mood. The same thing is true when people have our artwork in their environment. It is changing their mood. It is, it is changing their environment in a positive way. And in just in the same way that there's all different types of music, there's happy music, sad music, grunge music, there's a need for all types of artwork. Whether you are making angry art or you make happy art like I make, whatever the type of artwork that you that you make, there is a market for it. So the other key thing to remember is to is to be genuine to be authentic and to put what you're feeling onto the onto your paper onto your canvas uh, it is uh, it's important because people will pick up on that so so the, the way to know then if you're ready to sell your artwork is uh, if people are maybe people see you on social media uh, maybe people are seeing your work um, if you're if you're working on it in front of them, you're at the coffee shop, you're working on a sketch. Somebody comes up and admires that. Um, if you feel like uh, if you feel like it's like, hey, you know what? It would be okay if this piece of artwork would go to someone's home. If you're okay with letting it go, sometimes our artwork feels like it's like a little baby or it's it's our infant, it's our child. Um, if you're okay to let go, to say goodbye to the artwork, that's another sign that you are ready to sell your art. So I have a, um, a little thing that happened to me when I was little. I used to make cookies and I would put cookies and I would display these cookies uh, on a plate. And then my father, Dietrich Schaefer, who some of you know out on YouTube, my father would uh, would buy the cookies from me. So we would talk about each cookie and then he would give like a nickel or a quarter or something. This was back in the day. <laughs> the prices have gone up now, I suppose. But he would, uh, he would pay for it and he'd eat the cookie and he would enjoy it and I could see the satisfaction on his face. Uh, well, one day I had made some cookies and I had put them on the plate and a paper plate and I had was not in the house and daddy came by and he ate all of the cookies, but he had drawn a little outline on each of these and had put some money in each of those. So I came back and I was angry. I was a little girl. I was angry that daddy had not, I couldn't get a chance to sell them to him. And it, it made me sad and it made me a little bit angry and <laughs> it's kind of a silly story, but it's true. And I guess what I learned from that was that for me, uh, it's, I like that interaction with someone. Uh, now, what's true though also is in art sales, I personally do not like the interaction of the art sale. So I have galleries sell my artwork 
and it's all kind of an anonymous thing. I don't know who buys it necessarily, but I don't see that thing where, because to me, it's like if somebody would be looking at my work and saying like, uh, you know, that's not great, or I don't like that, or something like that, that would kind of pull me down and make me sad. Now, on the other hand, you might be, you, you might be like me this way, but you also might be one of those people where you're kind of like you like to sell the cookies to daddy. You like, you enjoy this process of getting to meet the people individually and working with them and maybe on a commission or, uh, or, or selling that directly to them. There's a certain satisfaction that you can get with that. I guess if you are one of those people that says, hey, I would love to sell my artwork directly, then consider uh, maybe uh, working through a co-op, a cooperative gallery, maybe selling directly online through Instagram, through Etsy. Uh, maybe it's a thing where you might enjoy doing a thing, uh, art festivals, where you go and work directly, uh, sell directly to the public. And, and that can be very satisfying. So think about your own personality and think about, hey, do I, uh, do I enjoy this business of, uh, of the business of sales of the artwork? Or do I prefer as kind of as I end up doing is I prefer to make it in solitude or make it by myself and then um, have somebody else sell it because of the whole, I guess for me, it's like the whole thing of rejection or <laughs> whatever. I don't know what it is. I probably need to get over it. Uh, but it's, it's a thing where, uh, oh, you know, it's, it's like I'm, I'm kind of maybe afraid to, um, to put it out there and, and to have negative reactions. And it seems strange because I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I'm on YouTube, I'm selling hours and everything. But I guess I'm like kind of like we all are. Every nobody likes rejection, and everybody wants acceptance. And so I guess there, you know, if you're like me, where you're one of those people where you're maybe a little bit timid for that, then maybe consider doing the again the anonymous thing. Maybe it's sold through your website, or if you uh, would sell through art galleries, have a, a second person sell for you. Um, uh, it, that, that could be something to think about. So the third topic we should talk about is how do I get started? How do I get started selling my artwork? Well, there are a couple things that you can do to prepare for this. And I guess one of the first things to do would be to be, um, it's a mindset thing, would be to when somebody comes up and admires your work, uh, let's say somebody, somebody comes up and admires this coffee cup. And they say, hey, that's a beautiful coffee cup. So what I would want to then do is say, thank you. Thank you so much. Or they might say, you know, oh, what about the coffee cup do you like? Maybe ask them questions about it. But what we want to avoid doing would be to say, if somebody comes up and says, oh, I love this coffee cup, what you want to avoid doing would be like, this old thing, I've had this forever. Or, oh, this coffee cup. I'm making much nicer coffee cups now. Let me show you this other coffee cup. When you do that, um, the person, the potential collector of your work, um, they're put off by that because you're not validating them as, you know, you're not validating their feelings about your artwork. And it's almost, it's almost like uh, shutting them down. So the first key would be is to be receptive to the idea of selling your work. And uh, in the same way that uh, I was uh, wanting to sell my work, sell my cookies <laughs> to my father when I was a little girl, um, the idea of, of your artwork, you have to be okay with the idea that your artwork will go somewhere else and be okay with the idea that it's going to go complete its life in some other environment. Uh, sometimes we'll make a piece of artwork and I'm sure you have this uh, in your mind. You have a piece of artwork and you're like, you know what? I never want to sell that. So I have, a, I have that with a few pieces that I've made over the years. And what you can do with that is just keep them. Don't ever put a price tag on it. And if somebody says, I want to buy that, you can say, you know what? I'll make you something similar. Or can, you know, hey, that one's very special to me. Can I, you know, make you a different one? And that's a way that we can still keep those pieces that are super special to us, but then also offer our artwork to the world 
to um, to brighten up or to um, enhance someone's environment. So another way to get started uh, with selling your artwork is to have at least 10 pieces that are consistent. And so when I say like, okay, what does that mean to have 10 pieces that are consistent? Well, what the goal is, is the goal is, is that someone will come come into a room and see your artwork displayed, whether that's in a, a gallery and a some sort of an exhibition. Maybe you are uh, exhibiting your artwork at a local coffee shop or a restaurant, a library, something like that. And you want them to be able to look and say, you know what, that's so-and-so's work. And, and they recognize your work um, from far away. That's the goal. But in order to do that, uh, you want to start thinking about how would I make and have 10 pieces. So the, the 10 pieces is kind of a number where um, art galleries, for example, they like to see 10 consistent pieces, whether it's paintings or, or if you do drawings, um, pastels, watercolor, uh, have them in the same medium. Um, and then and then also have kind of a similar look. So that doesn't mean necessarily the same subject, but it would mean that it has a thing that is special or characteristic of you. So let's say, for example, that you always uh, that you're doing drawings and you always tend to put them on a a toned uh, a toned piece of paper. That could be part of your look. Or let's say that you are paint a painter. And let's say that you have five special colors that you always tend to incorporate in your work. That's part of your look. That's part of your branding. So think about, uh, or, or it could even be size. Uh, maybe you you know, like let's say you have, uh, here's a little post-it note. Uh, I think these are four by four inches. Let's say you always do four by four inch paintings. That's part of your branding, part of your look. Or maybe you do always giant canvases. That's part of your branding, part of your look. So this consistency can be um, in the materials that you use. The consistency can be in the style that you work in. Maybe it's loose watercolors or tight photorealism, or it's expressive brushwork, or it's charcoal done with strong marks, or it's delicate light layering, whatever it is that you do, uh, if you are thinking about making a cohesive look or something consistent, think about the, the materials that you're using, the art materials that you're using, think about the way that you're using the materials, and then uh, in, in this way, how your, how, your look, how your artwork looks cohesive. So uh, when you get these pieces together, uh, that's then when uh, someone is looking to put together an exhibition, oftentimes they'll say, okay, we're looking for three pieces of art, five pieces of art. You can then go to that ten, that set of 10 things that you've made, and you can pick those and say, oh, you know, here, these could work for the exhibition. Or maybe they're looking for 10 pieces. Well, you've got 10 pieces ready to go. So today we talked about how to know if you are good enough, and we've dispelled that myth, everybody is good enough, um, because it's it's really a personal expression. Artwork is a personal expression. And we as artists are always working to improve our technique, improve our, our look, and that type of thing. But that really is is not so important for sales. That really is important for us, our own artist goals. Of, you know, maybe I want to make my artwork look better. That's something. But as far as selling the artwork, that's really not important. Really what is important is you as an individual, you as a brand, connecting with the audience, connecting with a coworker, connecting with a relative, and then them feeling the expression that you have created in your artwork. So that's the first step. Second step then is how to know if you are ready to sell your artwork. And we talked about that. Hey, that's going to be... Are you okay with it leaving, <laughs> leaving your creative space and going somewhere else? Are you are you good with that? Uh, it's like sending your child off to college. Are you good with that? Is it is it okay? Um, the other thing too is, do you have say ten pieces together? Uh, that's part of getting started. Do you have uh, a consistent look? 
um, or is your look kind of all over the place? Try and pull that into a tighter, consistent approach. And then, uh, and then the idea too of, of deciding, hey, do I want to be selling directly or do I want someone else to sell for me? Thinking about those things. But I want to encourage you, if you haven't already made your first sale, go out and do it because it's something special where you are then sending these little babies out into the world and they are, these little babies are your artwork and um, they're out making other people's environment something more special. And that's something that God has given us to do. And, um, and it's a very special thing. So I hope that you'll come back and um, watch another podcast. And I hope that you I hope that you enjoy today. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and give me a like. And I hope to see you again next time. So until next time, it's Dina Tollefson and all my best to you. Bye-bye.